Good morning. You're joining me on a miserably rainy commute this morning, and today I want to think about the uh, the Internet of Things, um, a modern phenomena encouraging manufacturers and hobbyists alike to make sure that everything they create is attached to the Internet. My understanding of the Internet of Things is that we have lots of devices that work together to make our lives easier. That's the plan, that's the future, it's jetpacks and uh, you know, flying cars. But I think the Internet of Things as it stands at the moment is a little bit naff. What started off as a hobbyist's endeavour, and we'll, we'll probably talk about that a bit more later on, um, seems to have been jumped upon by manufacturers, but not in, a, in an intelligent way. And now it seems that manufacturers are making their devices internet enabled just for the sake of it. We've heard the stories of the juicer that wouldn't juice unless it was connected via Wi-Fi to the internet, which of course left us all asking, what's the point? Why does my kettle need to be connected to the internet? Why does my fridge need to be connected to the internet? Why does my washing machine need to be connected to the internet? And of course the system falls down when these devices no longer function as washing machines, fridges and kettles if they don't have access to the internet. I don't need to tweet I've just made a cup of tea and I don't need my kettle to tweet for me that I've just made a cup of tea. However, the One Loan Coder blog is not going to be about rants. I'm, I'm not into that on the internet, it's too easy to be negative on the internet. So I want to spend some time trying to think about the internet of things, why it might be a success, why it's probably not going to be a success and uh, what it means for one lone coders, you know, the bedroom developers, the hobbyists. I was on Amazon the other day and they advertised to me these buttons I could press for when I ran out of toilet paper and uh, washing machine powder. And it's a little button that you just put next to your washing machine or your, uh, <laughs> your toilet paper holder in the bathroom. And uh, for example, if, it's, if you use Andrex, it has the Andrex logo festooned upon it. And uh, you press it and it automatically contacts Amazon, automatically buys you it, and it should appear one to two days later. And you know, Amazon will push the service in, in the future, it will appear that afternoon, of course, by drone delivery, which you know is the future there. So I press this button and a drone drops some uh, toilet paper out of the sky and it lands on my roof and then I spend the next two days trying to find some ladders to uh, get up onto my roof, at which point the birds have already pecked it and water has seeped into the toilet paper making it useless. But I can't knock the idea. Hmm. And what if instead of having buttons requiring batteries and Wi-Fi connectors everywhere, we had these, well, styluses and uh, that, well, it, look, it looks like a tablet, and it's got this uh, usually white front with lines on it. What's it called? But anyway, you can use this magical device to record a list of the things that you need. And uh, next time you go shopping, it will, it'll be there, it'll tell you what you need. But of course, Amazon, uh, not only are they selling products via these buttons, they're all, they will definitely be collecting the data. If they determine that you're requiring toilet paper every Saturday morning, uh, then they could probably advertise to you uh, things to do with your lifestyle that means you require a lot of toilet paper on Saturday morning. That for me is where the Internet of Things starts to fall down a little bit. There's, there's potential for real evil. Because it seems that the Internet of Things is really just being harnessed for social networking and selling you stuff. Not for making LEDs light up at command and doing cool, cool geeky things around your house. It's also very easy for unimaginative developers at these big companies to just to coin a, a popular parody uh, Twitter account to just bung a chip into it. And you can, you know, you can rebadge your product. This is a smart widget. It's a widget connect widget 2.0 widget connected to the Internet. The widget that learns about you. And you know, it, it's a it's a patronising attempt by, by manufacturers as well to suggest that my kettle is inadequate because it's not connected to the internet. And let's be frank, you're only going to press the toilet paper button when you've run out of toilet paper. So waiting for a day for it to arrive is not convenient in the slightest. It's a complete gimmick. I propose that nobody is forward thinking enough to remember to press that button when they've only got one day's worth of toilet paper left. What they should have is an internet-connected uh, smart toilet roll holder that can evaluate the thickness of your toilet paper roll and then tell you how many you've got left and order it for you in advance. 
It's a missed opportunity. I could so easily be a millionaire. Now, I was browsing my local B&Q the other day, and uh, I saw a nice, brightly lit display of, well, light bulbs. And these light bulbs were controllable via an app on my phone. I think they were a Philips brand. And I thought, oh, that, that'll be really cool. That, you know, I, I've got a, a living room which is, it's coloured by the lights that are put in it by design, so, so I like it. Wouldn't it be cool? I can just set the colour of the room, basically change the colour of the paint by changing the light bulbs. Anyway, the, the cost of these light bulbs was shocking. And if I actually invested in this technology, is it going to be around next year? Is my phone going to be compatible with it next year? And how am I going to really stop my neighbours from changing the colour of my light bulbs? It got me thinking about the broader implications of home automation, another tenant of the 1950s vision of the future along with Mabel Get Hat. There's a certain allure about having your home connected to uh, a central server and you control it all via a little device in your hand. But I think it's a, an artificial allure. I mean, I don't need to open my curtains with an app from my bed. I don't need to set the kettle off downstairs before I get downstairs. I don't need my central heating to follow me around the house. And I think it's a fantastic example of the Internet of Things undermining itself. I'm encouraged to push a button to get more toilet roll, but I'm dissuaded from pushing a button to turn the lights on. So why don't I just get the toilet roll app? Definitely an obsession with toilet roll this morning. I've not run out. My observations of home automation is nothing like the predictions from the 50s. So far it really just seems that Instead of having user interfaces on walls, we just have user interfaces on our phones. And we're told that this is more convenient. Well, it's certainly more convenient for the manufacturers. It's uh, cheaper and easier to produce. And if they get it wrong first time, they can just release patches. But I think that's where it all falls down, doesn't it? They can't really get it wrong. If they get it wrong and the heating system damages my house or leaks all over the floor, or I'm sure by installing the device I've signed a waiver which means I can't hold them liable for the damage. If a glitch in their software causes my energy bills to go up because it's looking at some health and safety executive website to tell me that my house needs to be a certain temperature at all times, and even worse, it's doing this without my intervention, who, who do I go to? Now let's say I go to the expense of making my whole house automated. My central heating system is fully replaced. I've got electronic valves on all, all the radiators. My lighting system is completely joined up by a networking cable and signaling cables behind the walls. It's cost me a fortune. I've torn the house apart. The wife's left me. Everything's in bits. Is anybody guaranteeing that I will still be able to use this technology in five years time? Is anybody pushing for a standard for this technology so devices can communicate? Let's you know, just take something as simple as a CAN bus. You know, make it so there's an object dictionary and you can index into it. At least then there's some cross-compatibility between devices so when one company goes bust, another one can come in and back it up and fill in those gaps. But that doesn't seem to be happening and that's because it's really now the big players jumping on the Internet of Things bandwagon. And they don't want to share their technologies with their competitors. And by having a proprietary technology, you're walled into their ecosystem. This is a far cry from what the Internet of Things was set up to do. But enough about the commercial applications. I think at the moment it's a gimmick, it's a, it's a bandwagon. It's the ability to put I and smart in front of your product. And I don't think people are that stupid. I think the companies are really underestimating the thinking capabilities of the general public here. So let's consider the plethora of options to the hobbyist and the maker who can now add internet capabilities to absolutely everything and anything. It's quite a simple idea. You provide a little board with some, some functional I.O., something like a UART, something simple that's easy to connect to your Arduino, whatever. And uh, this little board, all it needs is a Wi-Fi chip and antenna and some sort of internet stack programmed on there and away you go. It's a double-edged sword. On the one side, wow, it's really fantastic. It does open up the market. People can have a play and it can be a lot of fun and you can do some silly good things. But on the other side, it's, is it encouraging laziness amongst developers? 
Why are there so many of these boards? Why is it that they all seem to come from various Chinese factories now? Where are the, uh, the European and British and American companies that are making these devices? Does that raise issues of security? If all of these devices aren't conforming to any particular security standards, they're probably not secure. They may well be farming data, sending it to servers. Although admittedly, that data is not going to be very interesting. And I don't want to dissuade any home hobbyist from making a tweetable fish tank feeder. And it should all be seen in good fun. I think it's a powerful tool. And it requires the hobbyist and the maker to group together and set standards. Don't just create everything for yourself. We've done okay for traffic today. So I think the Internet of Things is still very immature at the moment. I think it's a bit of a gimmick. However, it's not going to go away. We do actually enjoy a connected lifestyle. Everybody's addicted to their phones. Nobody will argue that a phone is not a success. But it's probably the fact that the phone can do so much more than the one singular purpose of a typical Internet of Things connected device. I wonder if I should use ultrasound or laser range finding to detect the thickness of a toilet roll.